from Kobe and Duncan having the same number of championships to both retiring in the same year. This is Kobe versus Tim Duncan. Basketball is a team sport, yeah, but we just can't ignore the sheer brilliance of individual players that can turn the tide for their respective squads. Just looking at the accolades and awards that Duncan and Bryant earned in their careers can give us an idea of the impact that they had. Kobe and Duncan have the same amount of rings. Both of them have five. While Duncan outshined Kobe by having three finals MVPs when Kobe only had two, and Duncan had the advantage by having two MVPs while Kobe only had one, they both have 15 selections to the All-NBA, and we know that Duncan is an overall player. That's why he has 15 times voted to the All-Defensive Team, and Kobe has 12. And when it comes to All-Star selections, Duncan only took 15 while Kobe was selected to 18. Also, Kobe's one-man show is perfect for All-Star games. That's why he has four All-Star MVPs, and Duncan only has one. And before I forget about those shining gold medals from the Olympics, Kobe was kissing two while Tim had nothing. As you can already see, there's not much separating these two titans, right? If there was, we wouldn't even have a reason to argue, would we? Well, Kobe was an absolute bucket machine. There wasn't a single shot that he didn't fancy. And this is a recipe for pure, unadulterated entertainment and eye-popping scoring sheets. Bryant, going to the basket. Kobe yes. This shoot-first-think-later approach also saw him light up the scoreboards like a Christmas tree. For 20 from the line and an 81-point game. I mean, remember when he basically used Toronto as his own playground and scored 81 points? 81. Really? <laughs> nah, man, I'm just playing. Just two. Joke for him. He gets it. Kobe trails only Wilt Chamberlain for the most 60-point games in NBA history. And there was this one time where he outpaced an entire Dallas Mavericks team through three quarters, all by his lonesome. Considering Wilt played closer to the hoop and towered over everyone, Kobe's scoring tantrums become even more remarkable. Enter Tim Duncan. Isolation for Duncan against Jefferson. Great show and go. Oh! This guy was the calm within the storm, an efficient assassin, quietly going about his business. Mr. Automatic, with a solid 20 and 11 in almost three blocks during his prime, and he was more team-oriented than Kobe could ever be. The way he's going, and he doesn't embarrass you as much. Kobe, he had five kings around him. That was an odd. Well, that... Duncan averaged nearly six fewer shots than Bryant and never even sniffed 20 field goal attempts in a single season. You could chalk that up to a multitude of factors, but let's be real. Duncan was never the type to blindly chuck shots. While Kobe was busy painting the town red with his fadeaways and standstill jumpers from downtown, Kobe inside the three-point arc, fades and fires and hits the Duncan was silently ruling the boards and protecting the rim like it was Fort Knox. The Big Fundamental ranks fifth in NBA history in total blocks and sixth in total rebounds. Some folks might label his old school offensive game as tedious or unexciting, and I mean, I get it. But for the pure basketball fan amongst us, as long as the ball switches through the net, it's all the same kind of beautiful. Timmy for the win. Given Duncan and Bryant's shared zip code in the Western Conference, they'd bump into each other at least thrice a season, playoffs not even counting. So we've got a juicy 82 games worth of head-to-head -to, -head to look at. And who's got the bragging rights? In the regular season tussles that stretched over 52 games, it's Duncan who's laughing with a cool 31 victories. But the Black Mamba hit back in the playoffs, because in the 30 matches that they faced off, Kobe clinched the win 18 times. It starts to make sense when you consider that Duncan's teams were like well-oiled machines of consistency. Duncan and his Hall of Fame buddies, Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, were inseparable from 2002 to 2016. That's enough years for your kids to hit their rebellious teens, find their better halves, have babies, and Christian you a granddad. What's more, Duncan made the playoffs every single one of his 19 seasons. But Kobe's story was more of a roller coaster ride. The Shaq years were pure gold in terms of wins. 
But then there were the unproductive years like 2005 to 2007, right until Pau Gasol rode into town near the trade deadline of February 2008. After Kobe's Achilles injury in 2013, the Lakers were the league's favorite punching bag till his retirement. But in a playoff series, I know you know that if Kobe was locked and loaded, he would eat his enemy alive. In the six playoff series where these titans clashed, Kobe's Lakers emerged victorious four times compared to Duncan's two. The intriguing part here is that both of these legends cranked up the heat when the stakes were high. Kobe stacked an average of 28.2 points, 5.9 rebounds, 4.7 assists, and 1.4 steals, hitting 47.3% from the field, while Duncan clocked in at 25.2 points, 13.6 rebounds, 4.2 assists, and 2.3 blocks with his matching 47.3 shooting efficiency. In his Hall of Fame speech, Duncan gave nod to the special brand of intensity that Kobe brought to their matchups. You got a different intensity from everybody in the playoffs as opposed to a regular season. Um, as the years went on, even our, our regular season games brought that kind of uh, focus and intensity from all of us because we knew we were playing uh, uh, an opposing top team a possible team that we would see in the playoffs in those situations you always trying to find an upper hand uh, the intensity was always that much higher because uh, uh, the level of competitor that he was the teams that 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 he brought with him we always well, I always looked forward to playing against his teams I always looked forward to being on the court with him uh, um, because I knew that the crowd was going to be into it, the, the, the team, the, our teammates were all going to be more focused and um, all of a sudden you don't hurt as much because you know you have to have that energy to, to, to be there and be present that day. And while Kobe's layups look smooth and silky, he said this. Yeah, it was probably, I mean, San Antonio was tough. I mean, I'm not. I was a part of that team we yeah, stopped I mean, before, was, Pete. They were, they were tough. And so like when the playoffs came around, it wasn't like Shaq and I weren't on the same page. When the playoffs came around, we always were mm -hmm. on the same page. We just got beat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like we we've you know, the bigger question would should be how many would we have won if uh the Spurs weren't the Spurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you probably would have ran the team for a decade. That year, he was he was killing he was by himself that year. You know, he was lights out. He was lights out, right? And so you know, the talent, the coaching, everything in San Antonio was kind of a perfect storm. And so if they weren't in the picture, we probably would have run 10 in a row. So let's see what Jonah Hill's point of view about this is. Just joking. He's not Jonah Hill's. 10 titles in a row for the Lakers, if not for the San Antonio Spurs, guys. Is this BS or real talk? OK, this is real talk, but I'm what? about to get realer than Kobe wants. <laughs> and you know it's legit because the Spurs' toughness once made Kobe and Derek Fisher cry. Baseline and goes right around. Some fancy footwork. I'm schooling one of the great defensive players of this era, Robert Ory. Layton steps through, and you see him shoot it from his hip area and banks it off the glass. Well, Tim Duncan carved out his place by spinning between the realms of power forwards and the NBA's top cream. I'll go with Tim Duncan. Yeah, I did too. You go with Duncan. Duncan is probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think I was going to say? Timmy is superstar plus plus. He's by himself in his own knee. By himself. Now, you hear a lot of other people say Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever play the game. I agree with that. Tim was an amazing teammate. You know, what he was able to accomplish, you know, not only um, in the regular season, but more importantly in the postseason. How many times have you seen somebody get a triple-double in game six in the deciding game to win the championship? I knew he was great, but I really seen greatness that day. Like Tim Duncan is great. I knew he was going to play basketball. Duncan? Man, he's not just in the history books. He's that guy at the top of the table when it comes to power forwards. Yeah, sure, sure, Carl Malone was packing some punches too, but with no championship rings to show off, let's just say Duncan ain't got no competition. He steals the show without the fireworks and the drama, yet don't be fooled by his calm demeanor. That man was on fire, just in a cool, composed way, schooling the newbies and ensuring the oldies knew the score. All in for the team, Duncan was the guy everyone wanted in their corner. 
And hey, if Victor Wambanyama makes half the splash we're expecting, just remember that Duncan was the one stirring the waters. And how about Kobe? This man's Mamba mentality is still pumping through the veins of today's sports stars, not just the ballers. Now, people may rank him anywhere from number 3 to number 12, but dude, his accolades could wrestle with Duncan's any day. Sure, he had some dry spells and as many rings as Duncan, and there were those times when he didn't even get a shot at the playoffs. Off the court, Kobe was that spicy dish. You either loved him or hated him. And to be honest, others saw him as their savior. At the same time, some looked at him as a Michael Jordan wannabe with a controversial past that left a sour taste. But Kobe wasn't about throwing shade. When the time came, he stepped up to the sage plate, sharing his wisdom with young guns like Kyrie Irving, Devin Booker, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Jason Tatum. And you know what? If there's a number one reason that made Kobe's career better than Tim, it's that Kobe snagged an Oscar for his animated short, Dear Basketball. Come on, man. He's the first NBA player to do it. It was the Hoops love letter he penned announcing his retirement. And he even went on to bag a sports Emmy for outstanding post-production graphic design. And by the time the world heard this tragic death, I can't say anything, man. We missed you so much, Kobe. So, where's your bet? For Big Fundamental or the Black Mamba? It's a tough choice, right? Each is a winner in his own right, having their unique play style and leadership. Both of them shine bright on the court, but in different lights. And the beauty is that we don't have to pick. They both give us something to cheer for, something to dream about. They remind us why we love this game so much. So how about you? What do you think? Slam dunk those thoughts in the comment section below. And remember, your opinion counts, and every voice matters. This is Heroes of the Courtside, your stop for the NBA's most obscure yet fascinating stories.